For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. I guess I'm interested in teasing out this particular example, Luke, because I often think it helps to to have a sort of specific example in, uh, in front of us. But th- this idea that, that Hoyle predicted that the, the, I think it's something like the resonance of the carbon atom or something would have to take a very, very specific value in order uh, to, to allow the fusion that would obviously enable us to exist as carbon based creatures and so on. Um, uh, he, he felt there was something curious uh, that needed explaining at the heart of that, um, though, as I say, didn't he didn't end up becoming a theist or anything like that. What what's explain that example to us and, and what your <laughs> why you believe those kinds of examples do require an explanation beyond themselves, in a sense. Well, I, I can't do much better explaining the physics than Sabina without you know, <laughs> doing a whole lot of maths. Uh, but the, the, the basic idea was, is there. Um, you're trying to smash two things together to make three things, in fact, together to make carbon. Um, and it, it uh, given the physics known to Hoyle at the time, it simply wasn't going to work in large stars unless there was a bit of physics missing, this this way that carbon can wobble around, you know, oscillate um, and resonate uh, in a certain way. Um, so why do I, why is this? So the reason I think why um, this affected Hoyle was just that basically the thought, uh, you know, as follows. There's a, a wonderful quote from Dawkins, I think it must be behind me somewhere, where he basically says, you know, however many ways there are to be alive, it is certain that there are vastly more ways to be dead, or rather not alive. And he takes the example of if you take two grams of matter uh, and you arrange it, most of those arrangements won't fly or reproduce or do anything like that. So there's this this thought of, um, you know, what do you expect if if there's no deeper explanation of the world we see around us? Is, is, is that you wouldn't expect there to be any sort of uh, unlikely, uh, there's that word again, sort of remarkable, interesting, you know, you know uh, conspiracies that have to come together in order for us to exist. We just have to be, as Russell said, accidental collocations of atom, atom, atoms. So to find that our existence depends on a what seems like a very unlikely uh, thing to turn up in a carbon atom, that's, uh, that, that, Again, that, that overturns some of the way that Hoyle thought about the world. I should say, and I have to put in this little, this is the sort of asterisk that basically me and about four other people care about. Um, Fred Adams has done some interesting work in looking at exactly how fine-tuned this case is. There's a sort of back way around that. You can, you can for the experts, you can bind beryllium is another way of getting anyway it's not quite as fine-tuned as Hoyle thought it was but there still are good examples of fine-tuning 